We are back in John's Gospel today and looking at the end of John chapter 4. I called this section, Taking Jesus at His Word. I do encourage you, if you have found these videos helpful, to uh, like and subscribe to this channel and share them with others. Also, if you have comments or questions, please put them in the comments below and we can engage further in the comments section. I do encourage you just to take some time to read the story and familiarize yourself with it. Take some time to pray also and ask God to open your eyes to understand his word and to remember that his word is written so that we might know him more. And specifically here in John, we are given evidence that should cause us to believe in Jesus and by believing that we might have life through his name. So pray that your belief would grow as you dig into this section. Before I highlight some of the things that I've noticed in the text, I'm just going to show you this uh, narrative plot arc tool again, just to help you to see how I saw the structure in this section. With the narrative plot arc, we've got our setting, then there's some form of conflict, we have the climax to the story, from that point we get the resolution, followed by a new setting. In this section, uh, chapter 4, verse 46a, gives us the setting where Jesus is back in Cana, the scene of the first sign where he turned the water into wine. Um, so that gives us our setting. The conflict comes in 4, verse 46b, through to verse 49, where a royal official comes to Jesus and asks him to come and heal his deathly sick son. The climactic moment is in 4 verse 50 where Jesus speaks a healing word and importantly the official takes him at his word. And then the story resolves in 4 verse 51 to 54 as the power of Jesus' word is confirmed as the official receives this report that his son is healed which happened at the moment that Jesus spoke. But then importantly, we're told that the official and his family believed. So they, in John's words, would have received then life through Jesus because whoever believes in him receives life through his name. And then the new setting is in chapter five, verse one, where Jesus heads back to Jerusalem. So that's just a helpful tool to, to understand the passage. So to look at the passage itself, we've got uh, our setting, and then that is followed by the conflict, which is then followed by your point of climax, and then the resolution to the story and the new setting comes at the beginning of chapter five. Now, another helpful tool in a narrative like this is just to look at the different characters. So we've got this royal official um, whose son is sick. So we've got the royal official and then we've got uh, our Lord Jesus who is obviously a key character throughout the Gospel of John. It's all about him. Um, and we see that Jesus has returned to Cana and Galilee where he turned water into wine and he has this big interaction with this royal official. So as I said in John's Gospel we've got evidence which calls for belief, which leads to life through Jesus' name. And in this story, we see all of those at play. So Jesus says, unless you people see signs and wonders, uh, those signs and wonders, although Jesus is rebuking them at this point, John himself doesn't have a negative view of signs and wonders per se, but the signs and wonders aren't the main event. They are pointing to Jesus. Um, and we're told that this is the second sign. And what we see in this sign is that it caused... Jesus rebuked them and says, well, you'll never believe. But then in this man, we see that he took Jesus at his word. So he hadn't even seen the sign or the wonder, but he believed. And then by the end of the story, we see that his whole household believed. 
and by believing they received life. And we see this boy is told that he is alive, or he, the dad is told that the boy is alive again. But by the end of the story, his whole household believe, and as chapter 20, verse 30 and 31 tell us, that by believing you may have life through his name. So this son was given um, life from the jaws of death, because he was close to death, which we see in this section. But much bigger than that, he and this whole family were given life eternal. In this life, this boy eventually would have died again, but he had placed his trust, along with the whole family, in Jesus. And so he had received life eternal. Now we can read a story like this and become familiar with the details, but we really see the desperation of this dad. He's begging Jesus to come and see his son. And um, we're told that the son is close to death. So it's a desperate situation. But one of the wonderful things we see in this story is that sometimes desperate situations achieve glorious outcomes. This dad, this royal official, may have never come to Jesus if his son wasn't close to death. It was that terrible event that brought him to Jesus. And he got way more than he bargained for. Because not only was his son healed, but he and his whole family believed. They received life eternal. And we see, although he asked Jesus to, says, come, come to my house, come and heal my son, Jesus didn't come. But he said, go, your son will live. And the important point, the climax in many ways, is this statement. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. So he trusted that Jesus' word was true. He trusted that Jesus had indeed done the, the wonder of giving his son life again from the brink of death. One way that his trust is displayed is in this little word here, yesterday. So we're told that it was one in the afternoon when the fever left him. And he says that that is the exact moment, the exact time that Jesus had said to him. So, so this royal official was with Jesus at one in the afternoon. Um, he was in Cana of Galilee. To get back from Cana to Capernaum um, by horse which I assume he had as a royal official, it would have only taken him a couple of hours. So he could have been there by late afternoon, but he was only traveling back the next day because this report comes to him saying, oh, yesterday the fever left him. And this shows just how thoroughly this royal official took Jesus at his word. He didn't even need to rush back to see if his son would live. He knew that he was alive. His trust in Jesus' word was deep and real. And I think one of the key things that this story is teaching us is that like this man, we should take Jesus at his word. Taking Jesus at his word is believing him. And we have all of God's word to us. It is good word. In this case, taking Jesus at his word had a wonderful outcome in that his boy was living, but it had an even more glorious outcome in that this whole household believed and received life in his name. And that is the reality. Taking Jesus at his word will have a glorious outcome, no matter what situation you're in. Now, in our lives, that may not mean that the sickness will miraculously disappear. That sometimes happens. But what we can know for sure, that if you take Jesus at his word, if you believe in him, then no matter what situation you are in, the outcome will indeed be glorious because you will receive life eternal through his name. This story is like a book end. So Cana in Galilee is mentioned here. And Cana in Galilee was mentioned in chapter 2 verse 1, uh, the scene of the water into wine at the wedding. And so this is closing off a section from chapter 2 verse 1 to the end of chapter 4 is a section in John's Gospel. And in this section, we've seen uh, salvation going out to different kinds of people. We've seen Nicodemus turn to Jesus um, and trust in him. We've seen the Samaritans turn to Jesus. And now we see a royal official who is probably a Roman turning to Jesus. So 
as John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that includes Jews like Nicodemus, Samaritans like the woman and her people, and this royal official, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And as we take Jesus at his word, we can know that that promise is true. And so we should increasingly be a people who take Jesus at his word. And so as you dig into this passage further, as you teach it to others, I pray that we would increasingly be a people who do take Jesus at his word, who rejoice in the wonders of what he came to do, but to see that the signs and the wonders were more about, they were more than just the signs and wonders, they were actually pointing to Jesus himself, that we too would believe in him and receive a life that is on offer through him. Well, God bless as you dig in further. Thank you.